August 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 18 through 20 of the Old Testament. Then Bildad the Shuhite answered, How long until you make an end of words? You must consider and then we can talk. Why should we be regarded as beasts and considered stupid in your sight? You who tear yourself to pieces in your anger, will the earth be abandoned for your sake? Or will a rock be moved from its place? Yes, the lamp of the wicked is extinguished. His flame of fire does not shine. The light in his tent grows dark. His lamp above him is extinguished. His vigorous steps are restricted and his own counsel throws him down. For he has been thrown into a net by his feet and he wanders into a mesh. A trap seizes him by the heel. A snare grips him. A rope is hidden for him on the path and a trap for him lies on the path. Terrors frighten him on all sides and dog his every step. Calamity is hungry for him, and misfortune is ready at his side. It eats away parts of his skin. The most terrible death devours his limbs. He is dragged from the security of his tent and marched off to the king of terrors. Fire resides in his tent. Over his residence, burning sulfur is scattered. Below his roots dry up and his branches wither above. His memory perishes from the earth. He has no name in the land. He is driven from light into darkness and is banished from the world. He has neither children nor descendants among his people, no survivor in those places he once stayed. People of the West are appalled at his fate. People of the East are seized with horror, saying, Surely such is the residence of an evil man, and this is the place of one who has not known God. Then Job answered, How long will you torment me and crush me with your words? These ten times you have been reproaching me, you are not ashamed to attack me. But even if it were true that I have erred, my error remains solely my concern. If indeed you would exalt yourselves above me and plead my disgrace against me, know then that God has wronged me and encircled me with his net. If I cry out violence, I receive no answer. I cry for help, but there is no justice. He has blocked my way so I cannot pass and has set darkness over my paths. He has stripped me of my honor and has taken the crown off my head. He tears me down on every side until I perish. He uproots my hope like one uproots a tree. Thus his anger burns against me and he considers me among his enemies. His troops advance together. They throw up a siege ramp against me and they camp around my tent. He has put my relatives far from me. My acquaintances only turn away from me. My kinsmen have failed me. My friends have forgotten me. My guest and my servant girls consider me a stranger. I am a foreigner in their eyes. I summon my servant, but he does not respond, even though I implore him with my own mouth. My breath is repulsive to my wife. I am loathsome to my brothers. Even youngsters have scorned me. When I get up, they scoff at me. All my closest friends detest me, and those whom I love have turned against me. My bones stick to my skin and my flesh. I have escaped alive with only the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me, my friends, have pity on me, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me like God does? Will you never be satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written down, oh, that they were written on a scroll, that with an iron chisel and with lead they were engraved in a rock forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that as the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God, whom I will see for myself, and whom my own eyes will behold and not another. My heart grows faint within me. If you say how we will pursue him, since the root of the trouble is found in him, fear the sword yourself, for wrath brings the punishment by the sword, so that you may know that there is judgment. Then Zophar the Naamathite answered, This is why my troubled thoughts bring me back, because of my feelings within me. When I hear a reproof that dishonors me, then my understanding prompts me to answer. Surely you know that it has been from old, ever since humankind was placed on the earth. That the elation of the wicked is brief, the joy of the godless lasts but a moment. Even though his stature reaches to the heavens and his head touches the clouds, he will perish forever like his own excrement. Those who used to see him will say, where is he? Like a dream, he flies away, never again to be found. And like a vision of the night, he is put to flight. 
People who had seen him will not see him again, and the place where he was will recognize him no longer. His sons must recompense the poor. His own hands must return his wealth. His bones were full of his youthful vigor, but that vigor will lie down with him in the dust. If evil is sweet in his mouth and he hides it under his tongue, if he retains it for himself and does not let it go and holds it fast in his mouth, his food is turned sour in his stomach. It becomes the venom of serpents within him. The wealth that he consumed he vomits up. God will make him throw it out of his stomach. He sucks the poison of serpents. The fangs of a viper kill him. He will not look on the streams, the rivers, which are the torrents of honey and butter. He gives back the ill-gotten gain without assimilating it. He will not enjoy the wealth from his commerce. For he has oppressed the poor and abandoned them. He has seized a house which he did not build. For he knows no satisfaction in his appetite. He does not let anything he desires escape. Nothing is left for him to devour. That is why his prosperity does not last. In the fullness of his sufficiency, distress overtakes him. The full force of misery will come upon him. While he is filling his belly, God sends his burning anger against him and rains down his blows upon him. If he flees from an iron weapon, then an arrow from a bronze bow pierces him. When he pulls it out and it comes out of his back, the gleaming point out of his liver, terrors come over him. Total darkness waits to receive his treasures of fire, which had not been kindled, will consume him and devour what is left in his tent. The heavens reveal his iniquity. The earth rises up against him. A flood will carry off his house, rushing waters on the day of God's wrath. Such is the lot God allots the wicked and the heritage of his appointment from God. God, today I pray for I pray for everyone listening to this video who has been persecuted by others for the wrong reasons. And we've all been there at various times. Most of us are obviously persecuted for our faith at various times. Not as bad as in other countries, obviously, because most of us aren't ever threatened with death. But, you know, if we post about you on, on Facebook and other social media, we're going to have repercussions. And sometimes it can get as bad as what Job is feeling right now, where you can hear the anguish in his responses are seem to almost be coming out in a smaller voice because they're just beating him down and beating him down and beating him down. And I'm not really sure how he calls them friends, but <laughs> um, he even begs them in this particular chapter, please stop. You have got to stop. At what point? do I have to get in order for you to stop? Just stop. And yet they continue berating him, fully believing that they are right. We have to keep that in mind. They honestly believe from that time period that they are very right. And, and they honestly believe that they're trying to help their friend. They're just using some pretty harsh words to do it. But I think the part that we all need to hold on to is just one little verse um, in that middle chapter where Job's talking. And he says, as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that as the last, he will stand upon the earth. And that's the part that when we are going through times of persecution, when people don't believe me, when we feel like we're going through what Job has gone through. Job held on even through all of this and all of this amazing language. He held on to the fact that he knew you, God. He knew you were just and he, he also knew that he may not be vindicated here in this lifetime, but he would see you and you would vindicate him then. God, this is what we have to hold on to, that we know that you live. We know that you sent your son to die for us, specifically for our sins so that we could have eternal life for you and be forgiven of all this mess that we continue to create. We know that you live and will continue to live. And eventually we get to spend eternity with you, glorifying you, worshiping you. Those are things we need to hold on to. So when people talk about setting your eyes on the things that are true, the things that you know, uh, it's sometimes difficult when we're sitting here right now and we may be persecuted by people we call friends or who say they're our friends, just like Job was, or somebody may have wronged us at work or our significant other is taking us to task for something we know we didn't do 
we have to remember that you live. We have to remember that you are a just God and your just part, the justice of our Lord, is different than what our justice is here in this world. Thank goodness. We have to realize that ultimately we won't have to deal with the things of this earth. All of this drama that goes on here on the earth and the frustrations and the lies and the pain, it will just all be gone. We will only know what good is once we get to heaven. And, and to me, I can't even imagine that because I've tried. I can't even imagine only knowing good. Not a single bad thought, not a single piece of jealousy, not a single piece of pain. I just am baffled at that concept. But those are the things we need to hold on to. We believe in all of your promises. We need to believe on, on what our future looks like as well. Because you've promised those things to us. And Job's reminding us. As for me, I know that my Redeemer currently lives. And he's fully aware of the situation. And that as the last, he will stand upon the earth. I know he's coming back. And I know that I will get to see him. Which is exactly what he says in that next verse. God, sometimes it's so hard and we feel like we're on this earth forever and ever. And, and sometimes those situations seem to go on forever like Job is dealing with with his so-called wise friends. But we have to remember to rise above it and that we have our eyes on an eternal reward. And that eternal reward is to get to spend eternity worshiping you, praising you. And you have promised us to do that with good. With no pain no persecution, no lies, none of the things that we experience here on earth in those fashions. God, help us to keep our eyes on what is really important. The daily drama around us is not what is really important. How we respond to it is, but the daily drama is not important. It's such a small, small speck in the world because we have eternity to live in your goodness to live in your light. God, thank you for stories like Job that really put things into perspective for us, that what we go through isn't anywhere close to as bad as what Job goes through. Um, and on top of it, to have all these friends beat him down with horrid, horrid words and conversations with him to try and get him to repent. That we have an amazing gift that you've given us in your son, Jesus Christ, who took on all of those sins for us and gives us forgiveness and gives it, us a peace in our heart that truly only people who've received that peace will understand what that feels like. Thank you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.